If you've been on TikTok or Instagram or even scrolling through PMDD threads, you've probably seen this trend. Women taking antihistamines and saying that it totally saved them. I first caught wind of this when someone commented on one of my own PMDD videos, and I get why it's catching on. Some people do feel better. But here's the thing that no one's talking about. Antihistamines helping PMDD symptoms is not a fix in my opinion, but a clue. So in this video, I'm gonna explain exactly why antihistamines are helping mood symptoms, but more importantly, what this actually reveals about your hormones. Hi, I'm Jess. I'm a clinical nutritionist who specializes in women's mental health. And I've seen so many posts and videos lately where women with PMDD are saying that they started taking antihistamines and their mood swings, anxiety, irritability, or PMS related symptoms, maybe headaches really calmed down. Like I mentioned, I came across it right here on YouTube in one of my PMDD videos where someone commented on this trend. And I get it. If you found something that gives you even a little relief, of course, you're going to share it. And that's what makes social media so powerful. But when I got this comment, I was really intrigued by it because as a clinical nutritionist and someone who's worked in the functional medicine realm for years, my first thought was, if antihistamines are helping women with their moods, there's got to be a deeper hormonal pattern at play, one that is potentially overlapping with and amplifying PMDD symptoms for women that likely have a certain hormonal pattern going on. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about today. So let me explain. Okay, so let's break down the science of histamine really quickly. So histamine is not just an allergy molecule. It acts as a neurotransmitter, an inflammatory signal, which means that it can absolutely influence your mood, sleep, anxiety, pain, and overall nervous system as well. So it's very common for people to have mood symptoms in addition to allergy symptoms, headaches, skin flares, etc. when they have high histamine levels. I know this because in functional medicine, I've worked with not only a ton of individuals with histamine intolerance, but a lot of individuals with what's called mast cell activation syndrome. And these people release a lot of histamines and they often do really struggle with their mental health. So histamine interacts with glutamate, our excitatory neurotransmitter, potentially making the nervous system more reactive. And high histamine also impairs GABA signaling, our inhibitory and calming neurotransmitter. So yes, histamine can definitely worsen mood symptoms. But what does this have to do with hormones? Well, Estrogen is our biggest player here. As you can see on this super cool little infographic that I created, estrogen stimulates mast cells to release histamine, okay? So what this means is the more estrogen that you have, the more mast cell stimulation there is, and then that's gonna cause the histamine release. The second biggest question is, how does this tie into PMDD? This is a really good question because studies show that women with PMDD don't necessarily have higher hormone levels than women without PMDD, but their brains are more reactive to normal hormonal shifts. So I feel like a big part of my work and mission is to educate more women and providers around the fact that women can have completely normal hormones and still have these mood symptoms. So I'm going to be honest with you. When I first heard of this trend with women taking antihistamines for PMDD, I was quite honestly like, that doesn't really sound like PMDD to me. That sounds like a potential hormonal imbalance that we're going to talk about. But why someone is sensitive to these shifts can vary, and histamine reactivity can be one of those underlying drivers that are going to amplify luteal phase symptoms. 
What I mean by this is in clinical practice, I've seen a growing pattern. Many women, whether they have PMDD or not, are showing signs of estrogen dominance or poor estrogen clearance, which can absolutely make mood symptoms worse, especially during the luteal phase. So let me explain what estrogen dominance actually means because it's a term that gets used a lot, but there are a few different categories of estrogen dominant patterns. So the first pattern is that you may just be producing too much estrogen overall around ovulation, throughout your cycle, etc. The second estrogen dominant scenario is you have poor estrogen clearance. And what this really means is that your body isn't clearing estrogen as effectively through detox pathways as it should. Um, this can be genetic for some people, but there's other factors as well. So basically the estrogen builds up and it becomes more active in your system, especially during the luteal phase when we're supposed to be detoxifying that estrogen estrogen and those levels are supposed to be coming down. And then the third reason is actually that your estrogen levels may be normal, but your progesterone is too low to balance them. So this is called like relative estrogen dominance, um, where even normal estrogen can feel too high if progesterone isn't there to calm things down. So these should be in a certain balance. And uh, histamine is actually a really good example of this because estrogen destabilizes mast cells, which release histamine, and progesterone actually stabilizes them. So it basically helps produce less histamine. So this is an example of how even if you have adequate estrogen, but you have a progesterone deficiency, then you can still have a type of estrogen dominance and you can be producing too much histamine. So low progesterone can totally equal more histamine re reactivity and a worse mood. So yes, any of the scenarios that I just mentioned is going to intensify histamine release. So antihistamines can temporarily calm that histamine response, which is going to dampen PMDD, PMS, or really any mood symptoms in general, because remember that high histamines is tied to these mood symptoms in general. I would love to know from you in the comments below if you are someone who's tried antihistamines for what was believed to be PMDD symptoms and it was a game changer for you. I feel like this video is going to be really controversial because it sounds like I'm saying that it means that you don't have PMDD. That's not the case. Like I said, two things could be going on at once, but it is really important to recognize that not everyone with PMDD is going to have estrogen dominant patterns. And therefore, there's tons of women with PMDD that are not going to have histamine issues, and this isn't going to be one of the factors at play in their mood symptoms. And that's what I really wanted to highlight in this video. But if this did help, I want you to think about this as a clue. It could be your body telling you that there may be something deeper going on with your hormones, like an actual imbalance. So relief from antihistamines can equal possible estrogen dominance and an underlying imbalance, not just PMDD. And I really want to highlight that too, because if someone is just dismissing their symptoms as, oh, it's my PMDD, and there actually is an underlying issue that could be resolved, then that's something that's really worth looking into. This is exactly why I do encourage everyone to get their hormones checked because sometimes an imbalance can overlap with PMDD or what I refer to as a PMDD brain and make your symptoms so much worse. If you want to understand what I mean when I say a PMDD brain, where you're going to feel hormonal shifts way more intensely than other individuals, then I highly recommend you check out this video up here, where I take a deep dive into the root causes behind PMDD and cycle-related mood disorders. So hopefully, I'll see you in that one.